Well, I have no military training. <laughs> In fact, I'm running the other way from the Vietnam War. So I keep my uh, border crossing plan simple. I just got off to the left, into the bush, run cross country as fast as I can for a long time. Wow. Uh, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. My adrenaline is pumping. It's becoming, getting to be nighttime and uh, fatigue just overwhelms all my other emotions. I have no light of any kind to guide my way, and as it's dark, um, I just have to stop where I am. Uh, at least I have my umbrella. <laughs> well, uh, good thing, because it begins to rain heavily. And it's dark, so there's nothing to do but wait it out. Mm -hmm. One thing I learned in the Orient is how to sit on my haunches and so I do and I hold my umbrella above me and I'm so utterly exhausted oh uh, I just fall asleep oh I have no idea where I am oh. when I wake up seven or eight hours later what? I'm still sitting on my haunches and still holding my umbrella over my head. <laughs> okay, uh, sun's coming up and I look around. Where am I? All right. Makes me laugh. I'm on a little island in the center of a creek. <laughs> well, it's uh, daytime now, so I finish crossing the stream. Go up the other side and notice some animal tracks. and Those lead to human tracks, which leads to what? Like a huge path. In fact, it's the way from Darjeeling to Chitre Monastery. <laughs> oh, and five uh, Sherpa Himalayan natives coming down the path. Women. Uh, wow, how sturdy these women are. Oh, my God, they're uh, packs, uh, square boxes of cargo. They've got to be carrying about 140 pounds, you know, fucking 60 kilos. So, um, anyway, uh, I say gumpa gumpa, which means uh, monastery, monastery, and uh, they point up the way, and that confirms that I'm on the the Nepali side of <laughs> the world and on the right path. So, um, wow, freedom rush. So out of breath, high altitude, 8,000 feet, about 2,500 meters. Foggy, misty can't see far but oh the fog's clearing a little bit and there's the crumbling monastery itself uh, looking like uh, Shangri-La weathered fog rolling across the inner compound <laughs> and the monastery sits exactly I mean on the Indian Nepal border it's literally a stone's throw inside Nepal. And there's a big boulder that marks the demarcation between the two nations. <laughs> yeah, okay. Mm. Well, I'm cocky. I'm exuberant. Hey, let's talk right of passage. Jumped an international border. Didn't get caught. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm happy with myself. <clears throat> Very cool. Mm -hmm. Because if uh, Indian immigration cops would hassle me here, I'd just say, hey, look, uh, I, I tracked from Kathmandu to here. Lost my passport in Nepal. Tracking. So I'm, you know, kind of relaxes me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I courageously jumped the Himalayas. 
<laughs> and was rewarded by a oh, soft landing. Well, a uh, Tibetan leads me. They, 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 they reckon I must be visiting Dorothy because... Uh, this is probably the second white human being they haven't seen. They've held, had heard stories about abominable snowmen and so on, but they actually see a white creature, <laughs> uh, especially after Dorothy showed up, <clears throat> half dead in the back of a jeep, claiming enlightenment from Tuxay Rinpoche. Okay, <laughs> you know, um... The Tibetan cook guides me to Dorothy's room. And he has six fingers on one hand. Five fingers and the thumb on one hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, is Dorothy surprised to see me? Woo -hoo. <laughs> and I receive a letter from her sister that she'd split up with in Kathmandu because she took so much acid she had to go right to this monastery. That's it. Now kind of vision mm -hmm. well uh, Tibetan comes in with a little tray of flatbread yak butter tea wow uh, and politely backs away muffling a mild giggle <laughs> I'm so exhausted I just fall asleep after the tea and this hey. oh you know, anyway, I'm just going to stay here for a night or two. I'm on my way to Kathmandu, okay? So, um, all good. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be walking against the grain of nine mountain ranges for the next month. But, Dorothy has other plans for me. I mean, Dorothy's weak. You know, strange food, weak. But she wants to give the monastery a special gift of apple tree seedlings. Hmm. Because there's a Peace Corps volunteer three days walk from here towards Kathmandu who's selling apple trees. High altitude variety of apple tree seedlings to Nepalis like dirt cheap. Just give them away if, if who cares, you know. Um... Yeah, she'd asked me if I would go buy these trees and bring them back as an offering to the T uh, Tibetan monastery. Yeah. And, uh, sounds like down-home loving bodhisattva <laughs> energy to me. So, uh, yeah, Dorothy gives me a hundred rupees. Indian rupees, which is about 10 American dollars, to buy food along the way and get back, you know, eat. And there's no places to rent to sleep anyway, so you just make friends with the last house you see that day. Mm -hmm. And, uh, okay, one last slip, and I'm off in the morning. And uh, so spend that night in Dorothy's bedroom. Never think of uh, making love or sex, or just that wasn't the vibe at all. <laughs> but uh, off to get the apple tree seedlings. Mm -hmm.